These are the top five mistakes beginners make when naming their files and directories. Now, when I start teaching beginners, one of the first bad habits I need to break is how they name those files and directories. Operating systems are designed to be friendly to regular users, but some of the things these systems allow, they cause real problems when applied to professional IT work. So let's establish some good habits from day one, and you'll thank me later. Now, rule one, no spaces. Spaces in file and directory names might read nicer for regular users, but they can cause some serious problems. In particular, when we work with command line or terminal commands, spaces have meaning. These tools often assume that a space means moving on to another part of the command, not part of the same file name. So when we work with files and directories with spaces in the name, we have to add additional characters, which we call escape characters, or we have to wrap them in quotation marks or other symbols. Another example is web development. Spaces are not valid in URLs and they must be replaced by percent %20 characters. And at best, dealing with spaces and file and directory names is annoying. And at worst, they break your commands and your code. So when you're naming files and directories that have multiple words, professionals usually use one of these options. Now the first is underscores. Underscores are probably the most common. For example, myprojectfile.py. Next we have hyphens. Hyphens are a really popular choice in web files, though some tools and programming languages will treat hyphens as subtraction operators. But here you go, myprojectfile.py. And then we have camel case. In some programming languages, there is no separator between words. That's what they prefer. So what they do is the first character is lowercase and then each additional word uses a capital letter. So here's myprojectfile.py and camel case. And then we have pascal case. And sometimes this is called proper case or upper camel case, but basically each word starts with a capital letter, including the first character. So here's myprojectfile.py in proper case. And I don't know how much time I've lost in my career removing spaces and special characters from files that non-technical users send me, but if I had a dollar for each time, I'd be a very rich man. Now rule two, avoid special characters. That includes spaces. But in general, your letters A to Z and numbers zero to nine and the underscore are the safest characters. Hyphens, as I mentioned, are usually safe, but avoid special characters like exclamation points, dollar signs, and things like that. They are risky to use. Depending on the tools and software you're using, those special characters may cause problems. So here's some bad examples, and here's some better examples. Now in general, I avoid special characters at all costs, except in the rare cases where an application specifically requires them. It's not very common, but it does happen. Now the dot character is a special case because it is used for hidden files and extensions. Obviously we can use that in file and directory names for those purposes, but otherwise you should avoid using it. Now rule three is to be descriptively concise. There is an art to naming things. It's actually one of the more sneakily difficult things about being a technology professional. We want to pick names that are descriptive enough to be clear to others, but not so long that they're a pain to type. So here's some bad examples of file names. And here's some good examples of file names. And you can see the difference. And if you do this well, your future self and your coworkers will thank you for clear descriptive names that explain what the file or directory is for. Now rule four, is case sensitivity. And this is one thing beginners learn quickly when they're stepping into professional tech. Letter casing often matters. Capital H hello is not the same as lowercase hello, but sometimes it is. It depends on the software and the tool that you're using. And if you wanna save yourself some pain and frustration, 
I suggest just always assuming that letter casing matters, but when in doubt, you should use lowercase characters. It's by far the most common convention, especially when you're working with servers. And now we have rule five, dates and sorting. Sometimes it makes sense to put a date as part of the file or directory name, like a log file that contains information about a program that's running on a specific date, or a daily data dump of reporting information. It makes life so much easier if the file name can be easily sorted by the date that it references. But because of how numeric and alphabetic sorting work, you should always use the year, month, day format for dates in file and directory names. For example, these files will not be sorted chronologically. And the reason for this is that when you're sorting, each character is compared from left to right. The two in 12 comes after the underscore character when sorting. So the 2024 report would show up after the others if we're sorting it in ascending order, which is incorrect. Instead, if we name the files using the year, month, day, including leading zeros like this, now the files will sort correctly in ascending order. The names will be consistent, they'll always be the same length, and each character can be compared properly. That is how the sorting is going to work. So generally, the international standard date format of that YYY-MM-DD, that is the best format. So if you were born and raised in the United States, sorry, but you're gonna have to change the way you write dates. And now here's your bonus rule. Be consistent. Once you decide on a naming pattern in a project, stick with it. In professional software development, teams often have style guides that provide specific instructions for how you should name and organize your project files and directories. And if you fail to follow those guides and you're inconsistent, you're gonna really annoy your peers. So if you learn to apply these rules from the very beginning, you are going to have a much easier time getting started in learning IT skills. And to be honest, it'd be a better technical world if even non-professionals followed these rules too. Happy coding.